The coronation of the sovereign is one of the oldest institutions of our English church and state. It is older than parliament, it is older even than doomsday book and the Norman conquest. The first English coronation service was drawn up for the crowning of Edgar, a great grandson of Alfred the Great, as king of all the English in the year 973. Dunstan himself compiled it. From time to time in the course of its long life, the coronation service has inevitably been submitted to change and revision. The Reformation necessarily imposed certain changes on the service. And since the coronation of James I in 1603, the language has been English. The revolution of 1689 led to the last major change in the coronation tradition, by which the greater part of the solemnities have been inserted into the communion service. Even this change is not as radical as it might seem, for a form of coronation in an old Anglo-Saxon service book exhibits a parallel arrangement. In fact, so excellent was Dunstan's work that the broad pattern of it has endured to our day, and not a little of its detail is preserved in the coronation service of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same?
sirs, I here present unto you Queen Elizabeth, your undoubted queen. Wherefore, all you who are come this day to do your homage and service, are you willing to do the same? God save Queen Elizabeth! will follow the first part of the taking of the coronation oath, an oath which binds Her Majesty to the service of her peoples and to the maintenance of the laws of God. Will you solemnly promise and swear to govern the peoples of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, and of your possession, and the other territories to any of them belonging or pertaining, according to their respective laws and customs. I solemnly promise so to do. Her Majesty now signs the parchment copy of the oath, this being her only written contract with her people. And there comes the presentation to her of the Bible upon which she took her oath. The Bible is brought by the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Our gracious Queen, to keep your majesty ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes, we present you with this book, the most valuable thing which the world affords. Here is wisdom, this is the royal law, these are the lively oracles of God. And now there begins the communion service within which so much of the ritual of coronation is set. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. O God, who providest for thy people by thy power and rulest over them in love, grant unto this thy servant, Elizabeth, our queen, the spirit of wisdom and government that being devoted unto thee with her whole heart, she may so wisely govern that in her time thy church may be in safety and Christian devotion may continue in peace, that so persevering in good works unto the end, she may by thy mercy come to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The epistle is read by the Bishop of London. The epistle is written in the second chapter of the first epistle general of St. Peter, beginning at the 13th verse. 
submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning at the 15th verse. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar, or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. <laughs> then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. I believe in one God.
let us pray. O Lord and Heavenly Father, the exalter of the humble and the strength of thy chosen, who by anointing with oil didst of old make and consecrate kings, priests, and prophets to teach and govern thy people Israel, bless and sanctify thy chosen servant Elizabeth, who by our office and ministry is now to be anointed with this oil and consecrated queen. Strengthen her, O Lord, with the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Confirm and establish her with thy free and princely spirit, the spirit of wisdom and government, the spirit of counsel and ghostly strength, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and fill her, O Lord, with the spirit of thy holy fear, now and forever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now follows the singing of Handel's setting of the great anthem, Zadok the Priest. In the middle of this anthem, the queen will prepare herself for her anointing. This is a most sacred part of the service, for it is the queen's hallowing. Not until she has been anointed, as Solomon was anointed by Zadok, can she be crowned. During the anthem, she will be divested of her crimson robe of state and all her jewels, and will put on a simple white linen garment. In this garment of white, in such contrast to the splendors about her, she will move for the first time to King Edward's chair.
man anointed with holy oil. Be thy breast anointed with holy oil. Be thy head anointed with holy oil as kings and priests and prophets were anointed. And as Solomon was anointed king by Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet, so be thou anointed, blessed, and consecrated queen over the people whom the Lord thy God hath given thee to rule and govern in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 The canopy is borne away by the Knights of the Garter. And now the Queen is divested of her plain white garment worn for the anointing. The Dean of Westminster, helped by the Mistress of the Robes, puts upon the Queen the Colobium Sindonis, which translated means the little gown of linen. Over it, they place the lovely super tunica, a close pall or coat of shimmering cloth of gold lined with crimson silk. The queen is now ready to receive the regalia, the emblems of majesty. The Dean of Westminster brings from the altar the golden spurs of chivalry, so that the Lord Great Chamberlain can offer them to Her Majesty to touch. Then the Marquess of Salisbury, who has carried hitherto the sword of state, hands it to the Lord Chamberlain to receive in exchange the splendid jeweled sword in its scabbard. This he will give to the Archbishop who will place it upon the altar. Hear our prayers, O Lord, we beseech thee, and so direct and support thy servant, Queen Elizabeth, that she may not bear the sword in vain, but may use it as the minister of God for the terror and punishment of evil doers and for the protection and encouragement of those that do well through Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive this kingly sword, brought now from the altar of God, and delivered to you by the hands of us, the bishops and servants of God, though unworthy. With this sword, do justice, stop the growth of iniquity, protect the holy church of God, help and defend widows and orphans, restore the things that are gone to decay, maintain the things that are restored, punish and reform, what is amiss and confirm what is in good order, that doing these things you may be glorious in all virtue and so faithfully serve our Lord Jesus Christ in this life, that you may reign forever with him in the life which is to come. the queen offers the sword upon the altar.
she gives it in the service of God. Now are brought, for the first time in 300 years, the armils, the bracelets of pure gold representing sincerity and wisdom, the gift of the Commonwealth to this coronation. Receive the bracelets of sincerity and wisdom, both as tokens of the Lord's protection, embracing you on every side, and as symbols and pledges of the bond that unites you with your people, to the end that you may be strengthened in all your works and defended against all enemies, bodily and ghostly, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Another royal vestment is brought, this time the splendid robe royal, a pall of cloth of gold, and the stole royal, to be placed about the queen's shoulders. the Dean of Westminster and the Mistress of the Robes put the heavy pall upon the Queen. The Lord Great Chamberlain will fasten the clasps. The Queen now wears a robe that may well be descended from the imperial cloaks of the Byzantine emperors. Receive this imperial robe, and the Lord your God endure you with knowledge and wisdom, with majesty and with power from on high. The Lord clothe you with the robe of righteousness and with the garments of salvation. The Queen has received all the royal vestments. She now receives the priceless and beautiful crown jewels, culminating in the crown itself. Receive this orb set under the cross, and remember that the whole world is subject to the power and empire of Christ, our Redeemer. The Archbishop now places upon the fourth finger of her right hand the ring wherein is set a sapphire, and on it a ruby cross. This is often called the wedding ring of England. Receive the ring of kingly dignity and the seal of Catholic faith. And as thou art this day consecrated to be our head and prince, so may you continue steadfastly as the defender of Christ's religion, that being rich in faith and blessed in all good works, you may reign with him who is the King of Kings, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Dean of Westminster brings to the Archbishop the scepter with the cross and the rod with the dove. Receive the royal scepter, the ensign of kingly power and justice. Receive the rod of equity and mercy. Be so merciful that you be not too remiss. So execute justice that you forget not mercy. Punish the wicked. Protect and cherish the just. And lead your people in the way wherein they should go. A signal is given, and there enter the theater from all sides the pages bringing the coronets of those who have been taking part in the service. O oh God, the crown of the faithful, bless we beseech thee this crown, and so sanctify thy servant Elizabeth, upon whose head this day thou dost place it for a sign of royal majesty, that she may be filled by thine abundant grace with all princely virtues through the King Eternal, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
the moment of the Queen's crowning is come. with a crown of glory and righteousness, that having a right faith and manifold fruit of good works, you may obtain the crown of an everlasting kingdom by the gift of him whose kingdom endureth forever. Amen. Amen. There comes now yet another ancient ceremony. The queen will ascend the steps of her throne, there symbolically to be lifted into it by the Archbishop and the Earl Marshal, in the sight today of a great multitude of people. This throne, like the raised floor of the theater itself, is descended from those days 1,500 years ago, when the early kings sat for their crowning upon a mound of earth, and were then lifted high upon the shoulders of their nobles so that all the peoples might see them. It is at the moment that she is seated upon her throne that she takes possession of her kingdom. All the princes and peers present now do homage to Her Majesty as she sits in full sovereignty upon her throne. First, the Archbishop of Canterbury leads the bishops in declaring fealty. All the bishops present will kneel with the Archbishop. I, Geoffrey, Archbishop of Canterbury, will be faithful and true. Faith and truth will bear unto you, our sovereign lady, queen of this realm, and defender of the faith, and unto your heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. <laughs> all manner of folks, so help me God. continues with the singing of the offertory hymn, The Old Hundred, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
Her Majesty offers bread and wine for the communion, and these are blessed by the Archbishop. Bless, O Lord, we beseech thee these thy gifts and sanctify them unto this holy use, that by them we may be made partakers of the body and blood of thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and fed unto everlasting life of soul and body, and that thy servant, Queen Elizabeth, may be enabled to the discharge of her weighty office whereunto of thy great goodness thou hast called and appointed her. Grant this, O Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Now the queen makes her traditional offering, an altar cloth delivered to her by the Lord Great Chamberlain. Next, an ingot of pure gold of one pound weight. And now, the Duke of Edinburgh comes forward to make his offering. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ church militant here in earth. <coughs> Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept these oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer under thy divine majesty, beseech we be to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her, and that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. We give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, and that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. To ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbor, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Go now with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty, Almighty God, God, Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our many first sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. For when we most trust in thy wrath and indignation against us, we do urge to repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, 
Remember us that is grievous unto us, the burden of them that is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter to serve and please thee in the unity of life. The honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sin to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Yeah, one comfortable, one comfortable words, our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him, Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your heart. Give thanks unto our Lord God. This is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all places and all times give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Who hast at this time consecrated thy servant Elizabeth to be our queen, that by the anointing of thy grace she may be the defender of thy faith and the protector of thy church and people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, table, O merciful Lord, and trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. For we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, 
serve to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The communion service now reaches its climax in the prayer of consecration. The Archbishop solemnly recalls the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross for our redemption and repeats the words spoken by our Saviour at the Last Supper on the same night that he was betrayed. This prayer will be heard only by those in the Abbey. solemnity of Her Majesty's coronation. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, <coughs> keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.